What now? I imagine this was the question on the disciples' mind as they were gathered together in a house on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, reflecting on what had happened in the previous weeks. Just a few weeks ago, we don't know exactly how many, maybe two, maybe three. They have lived the joy, the exuberance of Palm Sunday, followed by the sorrow and the defeat of Calvary, how they saw it. Then they woke up on Sunday morning to the incredible news of the empty tomb. Then Jesus appeared to them twice. They saw the risen Christ. They saw the Lord. They were excited. They were overjoyed. But then Jesus left. They did not know what's gonna, what was going to happen next. Is Jesus going to come back? Is it all over? What about us? What now? You can feel a sense, reading this, this passage, you can feel like a sense of uncertainty. A sense of not knowing what's going to happen next. And probably the disciples were asking, what's going to happen next with their lives? They're sitting together, and Peter, man of action that he usually is, he just can't stand these things anymore, the state of things, and says, I'm going back fishing. I'm going to do something. And everybody else, probably bored and tired and also wondering what's going to happen, say, we want to go with you. And they go fishing. And in the morning, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus appears to them. And that encounter changes everything. Brothers and sisters, it is obvious that we also live in times of uncertainty. We live in difficult times. The church has been closed for five weeks. The schools have been closed. We don't know what's going to happen next. There's a lot of questions, a lot of People are putting all kinds of different ideas and opinions about what's going to happen next. And there's this sense of uncertainty. But today, I want us looking in the Word of God to be encouraged, observing some truths. And the truths that we want us to look and, and observe in this passage are that Jesus is alive and powerful. The other truth that we want to observe tonight is that Jesus cares deeply for us. And the third truth that we want to observe tonight is that Jesus has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. And let's go through this passage and see how this ties together. I said that the first thing that we want to look at is that Jesus is alive and all-powerful. So the disciples went to the Sea of Galilee. The, the, it's also called the, the Sea of uh, Tiberias. It's the same name for the same sea. It's close to the, their hometown where Peter and the, the other disciple lived before. And Jesus decided to show himself to them in that setting there. And Jesus chose just to show himself to them as the risen Christ because he wanted to, to make sure that they knew that he was alive. That it wasn't just what they saw before, the appearances that they saw before wasn't just a figment of their imagination, wasn't just a phantom, wasn't just hallucination, but he has risen indeed and has in a, in a physical, in a, in a tangible form. So Jesus appears to them by the Sea of Galilee. And what I want to, to, to encourage us through this difficult time that we are going through is that Jesus is alive. Jesus, the same Jesus that died, he was resurrected. And being resurrected and defeating death, he is the same today alive. And 
believing in Jesus being alive, being risen from the dead, and the risen Christ, we can have hope because he is alive and he also has control of all things. You know, we see in this, we see in this passage that not only is he alive, but he also, he also knows everything and he is all powerful. He still does miracles. He goes to the disciples and he knew exactly where they were. Imagine, they, have, they, they went to the, to the Sea of Galilee, they went on, the, on, the, on this fishing expedition, they toiled all night, thinking they were alone. But Jesus knew exactly where they were. Jesus knew where the fish were. He knew, like if, we, if you look at the miracle, Jesus even knew where everything was, every, every, every creature in this earth. Jesus said that God knows even when a sparrow falls down. Brothers and sisters, we have heard a lot about this repeated over and over in the last few weeks, that God is in control. But my question is, in our hearts of hearts, going through these difficult times week after week, not being able to meet with each other, do we really believe that in our hearts? Do we believe for ourselves in our hearts of hearts that Christ is risen and that he is our Lord? He is all powerful. He is the one who has our life in his hands. He knows our situation. He knows where we are at. Nothing is besides his control. He did not forget about us. Just like he did not forget about the disciples who are probably somewhere uncertain about their future. He did not forget about us, brothers and sisters. And if Jesus, just imagine that. Jesus knew where a show of fish would be and the exact timing where the disciples would just throw the net and get those fish into the boat. How amazing is that? Do we really believe that God has this kind of control in our lives? Or maybe we are buying, maybe, maybe beaten by disease, beaten by all these this trials that we're going through. Maybe we start to think and maybe we accept the thought that maybe God is not that powerful. Or maybe God is powerful, but he is somewhere high above, five apart from us. And he has left us to our own devices, to tend for ourselves, to use our own power, to use our own means of protecting ourselves. And he has just kind of let, let us deal with it. And he's somewhere aloof. The word of God tonight encourages us, brothers and sisters, and tell us that Jesus has risen. And not only that he has risen, but he has control and power over all nature, including this virus. Nothing happens, nobody gets sick, nobody dies without him knowing, brothers and sisters. Everything is in his plan. The fish in the sea are in his plan. The birds in the sky, the Bible says that he feeds the birds in the sky. He knew what the, what the disciples were thinking. Remember Thomas, Jesus wasn't there when he expressed his doubts, when he said what he said, but Jesus came in their midst and talked directly to Thomas and told him, come here, bring your hand here. Because he knew what, Jesus, what, what Thomas was thinking. He is everywhere, he's all powerful, he is God. And I think it is time tonight to realize, brothers and sisters, that Jesus is alive. And not only is he alive, but he is the master of the universe and he holds me and you in his hand. And nothing in this world happens to me or to you without his will, without him allowing it. And I want us tonight to be encouraged by this truth that we find in the scripture tonight. The second truth that I see in this text is that Jesus is not only alive. He's not only all powerful. What, was, what use would that be to us if, if he wouldn't care for us? But he cares for us. We see that, the, that Jesus orchestrates this meeting with the disciples because he knew 
that their needs. And he says here, but when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. The disciples thought they were all alone, maybe that they were abandoned. They had no idea if Jesus would ever come back or what would happen. But Jesus came to them. He took the initiative to come to the disciples and meet with them. Because he knew their thoughts. He knew their spiritual needs. He knew that they were not ready for him to live yet. He knew that he still had something to do, especially with Peter. So Jesus came to meet with them and take away their uncertainty and take away their fear and change the way they were looking at things. We see that. So Jesus stays comes on the shore and the disciples didn't even realize that it was Jesus. And sometimes this, what ha this is what happens in our lives. We think that we are alone. We think that maybe God is somewhere far away and has abandoned us and we cry to him and he's not answering. But maybe Jesus is just sitting right there on the shore, just waiting for the right moment. He's always around us, he's always close. And I want us to take courage tonight that Jesus cares for us. And look at the loving care just in this, just in this story with, how, with how, they, how they they brought the fish and how Jesus blessed their, their efforts. The, the poor disciples were tired after a night of fishing. And Jesus asked them, children, have you any food? And the disciples just kind of have to, have to admit that they don't have anything. And Jesus performs a miracle. And I think this miracle has two purposes. One, it is to, to, to them, for them to discover that it was Jesus who was calling to them. But the other purpose was to bring them joy, to, 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 to lift them up. And to care for them and to show that he is in control of everything and he actually cares to fill their nets with food and provide for them. He provides for them. He blesses their efforts. They go out and they work. And, and it's, such a, it's such a lesson for us to, to know that without Jesus in their boat, the disciples worked and they worked hard all night and nothing happened. But with Jesus, what we could not have accomplished in a long time of strenuous work, just at his word, everything can happen. He can bring victory to our defeat. And he can change everything in a minute because he is the God of the universe. He's the one that cares for us. And look how nice Jesus receives the receives the, the disciples on the shore. When they come, they find already fish and bread and a fire to be warm at. He knew their needs. He knew that they were hungry. He knew that they were tired. And the God of the universe took time to prepare breakfast. Can you imagine what was in the, in the hearts of the disciples they had just witnessed a miracle. They realized that Jesus was on the shore. They come there and they also realize that there's even some fish there. Where did those come from? And they're so, I, I imagine this scene like them being speechless in awe. They don't know what to say. It says over here, it says, Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dare ask him, who are you? Knowing there was the Lord. I think they were just kind of in awe and not talking very much. They were just kind of looking at each other in awe. And Jesus, showing his care for them and his love for them, starts to serve them. It says, Jesus then came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. And likewise the fish. Jesus again, show them what it, how much he loved them and how much he cared for them by serving them. Brothers and sisters, let's be encouraged tonight 
that Jesus cares for us. He cares for our needs. He cares for our problems. He hurts with us. He loves us. He wants to help us. He wants us to, to trust him. He wants us to know that we are taken care of. And I want, I want us tonight to be encouraged and to believe that, that just how he took care of the disciples, after a night of disappointment and after a night of toil, he also take care of, will take care of us. And maybe you're still in the night, maybe you're still toiling, maybe you're still fighting on your own and you think you're on your own but you might be just so close to morning when Jesus is waiting for you on the shore to care for you, to give you rest. The third thing I want us to look at and be encouraged tonight is that Jesus not only is alive, not only is he all powerful, not only does he care for us, but he has a purpose for us. I don't think it was a coincidence that Jesus decided to appear to the disciples in this fashion again. If we read in Luke 5, this was exactly, it's similar to the way that Jesus appeared to Peter first. When, when with a miraculous catch, Jesus fell, uh, Peter fell at Jesus' feet and said, Lord, depart from me for I'm a sinful man. Jesus told Peter that time, come with me and you will catch men. I will make something of you. I have a purpose for you. I have a plan for you. And I don't know what was in Peter's heart when he said, let's go fishing. Maybe he was just hungry and he wanted to go and provide for, for him and for the others. But it's also possible that Peter was probably discouraged. He probably thought that he wants to go back to if Jesus is not here, maybe I'll just, I don't have a specific plan to go. Maybe I'll just go back and start what I'm good at. Go start fishing again. But this was just another calling for Peter. And look at Peter's reaction. When Jesus stays on the shore and Peter realizes, because John, John is the first one to know, and, and, and John is the one that just tells Peter, it is the Lord. When they see the miracle of, of the catch, he remembers the first time he caught fish. And Peter just takes his coat, takes only the time to take his coat, leaves the fish, leaves everything, jumps in the water because, because he could not wait to meet with Jesus. Because Jesus was not done with Peter. Maybe Peter was doubting that Jesus still wanted to use him. Maybe. Jesus still wanted to build his church on him, on all his promises that, that Peter had. But after the events of the last few weeks, maybe Peter had reason to doubt that Jesus wanted to continue with his plan. But Jesus still has a plan. Jesus does not give up so easily on Peter. And, and he calls him, and Peter responds. And he calls him, and, and, he, and he calls them, and he asked him again three times, the same, the same, the same way, it's like a parallel. Peter denies, denied Christ three times. And then after breakfast, Jesus asked Peter again three times, Peter, do you love me? He calls him again to serve him. And Peter answers, you know I love you. I love you, Lord. There's the, Peter's, declaration of love to Christ and Jesus calls him to serve others. And I believe, brothers and sisters, that just how Jesus had a plan for the disciples, he has a plan for each and every one of us. He has a purpose for us. And the fact that we are going through these hard times doesn't mean that God has abandoned his purpose for us, his plans for us. But maybe it means that God wants to continue 
to, to use us, but why God wants us to, to use this time to, to mold us, to transform us for the times that are ahead. Because Peter would have not been the, the apostle that we read in the Acts of the Apostle. If he would have not failed Jesus, if he would have not gone through these steps first, if he would have not gone through the, 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 to the repentance and through the, through, the, through the experience of being forgiven by Christ, I don't think Peter would have been the same man. This is why I want us tonight to be encouraged. Even in these hard times, God has a purpose for us. God has a plan for us. And I like how it says here that if you read further, Jesus has a specific plan for Peter and Jesus has a specific plan for John. And he tells them, you know, you don't worry about my plan with John. You follow me. And the message to each and every one of us tonight is follow me. I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. I did not abandon you. Brothers and sisters, we are living in difficult and uncertain times. But tonight the word of God is giving us courage that Jesus is alive, that he cares for us, that he still has a purpose for us and a plan for each and every one of us. Blessed be his name. Amen.